All right, I know we've done the findings. Let's just quickly double check that you'll be getting all your marks. So for the findings, we need to formulate at least three appropriate claims, arguments or findings. They need to be appropriate and relevant to the investigation. Okay. Answering the focus question and or research questions. Now, I know you might not necessarily have asked some of these specifically in your 10 research questions. So that's not a train smash. They just need to connect to the actual topic at least. Um, they need to be supported by relevant appropriate data, information, graphs or diagrams. So you can't actually make claims or findings that haven't that you don't have support for. So make sure that you actually can prove it by uh, what your chart or your graph or whatever is showing. There has to be a meaningful explanation of why the evidence support these findings and it needs to be drawn from the information presented in the report and still address the original problem. Just to give you an idea quickly of the findings interpretations, they don't have to be, um, well, let me show you. This is a bad, bad interpretation. Um, it just says in the graph above, you can see if people would consider to use a water purification system or not. I told you, I don't want to have to look at the graph. I need to be able to read it and understand what the graph shows without having to look at the graph, but it doesn't have to be so super specific. So, in this example, it's not like you have to tell me 18 people say this and 18 people say that you can, but you don't have to. So in this one, it just says most people are willing to help people by donating or providing food and clothing. See, that's fine, but most, but very few people were will, willing to help with shelter. So um, this is a better way of doing the finding because now I can understand what it shows, but I don't, I don't necessarily need the actual numbers of everything. All right, so I just want to show you the marking grid. So at least three uh, claims that are appropriate and relevant to the investigation. So the reason I would subtract this mark is if someone puts in a claim or a, 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 a finding that actually says something like, this is how many respondents filled in my form. And I'm like, I don't care how many people filled in your form that is not an appropriate finding for the investigation. Like how many people per gender um, filled in the form. That's not an appropriate finding. Okay. Are the claims supported by relevant data? So is it actually supported? Do you have proof for what you're claiming? Do you have like a graph or a screenshot of the report or the query that proves what you're saying? And then thirdly, um, do you have a meaningful explanation that shows a clear understanding of the problem? So that's about how good this explanation is underneath the finding, underneath the chart, saying what your interpretation is. Is that meaningful? Do I understand that properly? Does it show insight into the problem? And then lastly, the findings include new and thoughtful ideas or insight about the problem and investigation. Now, you need to work hard for this mark. This is not the mark that just everybody gets. Um, this is the kind of thing where you show insight, where you realized, okay, A plus B equals C. I could see a pattern between people who answered this in the one question and people who answered that in the other question. And that's how I can draw this conclusion. Um, or you are connecting the information that you gathered in your con in your um, phase two questionnaire to something that you researched in phase one. So, for example, in phase one, you did some research about the statistics for whatever question it was for the whole of South Africa. And then in phase two, you found out what those same statistics are in your community. And then you can say, OK, so I see there's this and this difference. This could possibly be the reason for that difference. Um, what other impacts can you actually draw a conclusion from or, or a finding from? So this mark you really need to work a bit harder for. All right, but that's actually not what we're doing now because I assume you've already done that. But just perhaps double check that you'll be getting all your marks there. In my example, I only have two. Right, now we're going to be writing our conclusion, die gevolgtrekken. So the conclusion needs to be meaningful and logical and it has to address the original problem statement in light of the evidence presented so this is extremely important we have to look back 
at the focus question and reinterpret that based on the evidence we've gathered in phase one and in phase two. But it may not contain new information that we've not researched. Okay, so it can't just be opinion based. The conclusion, writing a conclusion is actually a, a bit more difficult than one realizes. And I don't think, I don't know how much training you guys get in the languages about how to write it. So let's have a look um, in how to do it. It, it um, counts four marks. So let's do this properly. I'm going to give you some good guidance. I found this fantastic um, article on WikiHow that's always been helping me quite a lot. And I think it gives us some um, good guidelines. I would aim for, um, I'll show you two examples now uh, of what it what it should look like. I would aim for about eight to 10 lines in my final conclusion. I'll take you through a few steps and each step, literally just one, one or two sentences maximum. So the first thing is, we won't be doing all the steps, but we'll do some of the steps. So um, you will briefly restate your topic and say why it's important. So this is something about the problem, hey, our initial problem and why we focused on that. Then secondly, they, state, they say restate or rephrase the thesis statement. This is our focus question. So you actually need to restate your focus question. And the point of the conclusion is actually to answer the focus question. So that's very, very important. Next, we need to summarize our main points. This is one where you actually can spend an extra line or two where you can say, especially from phase one, maybe per heading, like if you had three headings, problems, costs or solution, whatever your three headings were, one or two, like let's say one, one main point per heading, you can say, and one or two findings from, from your phase two. That's basically what you're doing here is you're summarizing your main points, but there can be no new information. This is extremely important. No new information, but it has to be very brief. It can't be a long, can't be that long. All right. And then if it's necessary, you can make a call to action. If there's something where you say, right, people need to do their part. Everybody needs to work together, make a call to action, right? Then we're going to bring it full circle. So bringing it full circle means the introduction and the conclusion needs to link together. And this is where we're actually doing the final answering of the key problem slash the focus question. So you need to say what the answer is to the focus question where, and I mean, your focus question probably asks something about how do you solve this problem? So you need to make an opinion now and, and to state your opinion of how do you think this problem can be solved? And then lastly, if you want, you don't have to do this. Something that's quite nice is to either make a suggestion or pose a question. So that can be part of the bringing it to full circle is to actually pose a question. Will we ever get this right? Or will society ever wake up? Whatever. Or make a suggestion is like government needs to step in and help in X, Y, Z. Right. So that's a nice way to do a conclusion. Let's look at two examples, something that works and something that doesn't work. So um, this conclusion, it gives you a good idea of the kind of um, length that we're looking at. But if you actually read through this, um, they're talking about these not lots of natural disasters. Um, they realize volunteers programs are very important to the people in the community. Nobody said it's not important. They've experienced lots of natural disasters, blah, blah, blah. And if I read through all of it, people are willing to join a volunteer program, da, da, da. They are literally only talking about phase two. They're not saying a single word about their phase one findings. So I'm not going to give full marks for this conclusion. Here's another example. The length is okay. It's maybe a little bit short, but um, you'll see they also talk a lot about um, phase two findings more than phase one. But the big thing here is they don't actually state any actual results. Um, they just say they focus on South African statistics for gender violence. It's some of the worst among the world. Don't say anything about actually how much it is. Um, most people are aware of it. Um, and they just basically say they are different abuse depending on class distinction and it differs for everyone. And uh, the signs of abuse uh, are the same 
and where to get help from but they don't actually say where to get help from or what the signs are so this is also the conclusion doesn't actually teach me anything it it doesn't it just talks about what they find but it actually doesn't state any of the actual findings so here are, are two better examples so um, if I look at this uh, conclusion you'll see they also like restate the problem a little bit they say lots of countries struggle to get the clean water it plays a major uh, part in health and hygiene so they're stating the major points um, they they say they're saying what must be done so they're making recommendations people must be made aware and they're doing like a final um, suggestion or like a final call to action kind of if we all work together we can solve the crisis right um, and over here also a good example just saying that animal abuse is a problem um, people don't really speak about it but lots of things about the main points it can be improved with this and this and this and stating lots of things of what people can be do anything can be long done as long as the goal of maximizing the impact is reached but then they say specific things like it's found that video ads on social media is the best way to obtain help from the community and they actually state specific findings um, that they found the most impact from okay um, lots of people have actually seen it uh, and then at the, in the end you know ending it off strong now that we know how to make a difference there are no excuses you need to help right so once you've done that then we've done our conclusion it's present you've drawn it from information presented in the report and it addresses the original problem or state problem statement focus in light of the evidence presented so this is about whether it actually answers the focus question or not it's meaningful and logical, so it actually follows a logical order, and it's relevant to the focus question in phase one as well. Sorry, this one is about does it connect um, both phases, phase one and two, so it addresses the original problem and it uh, gives you all the evidence. And then this last one specifically does it answer the focus question in phase one.